Okay. Uh, hey, welcome back. Hello, everyone. Um, glad you uh, decided to move on to this second video. Uh, last time we talked about, you know, just basic overview of this config program on OpenBSD. Um, you know, just some preliminaries, some introduction stuff until we get into YYParse. And uh, this time uh, we're going to get into YYParse. Um, you know, just give a little overview of it. Um, there, YYParse is, you know, it's designed to read this configuration file. Um, and it can be broken down into basically three parts. Um, there is, you know, first of all, like I should say, this, the part, like the file itself uh, that you, the configuration file that you pass to config, it can include other files. And in fact, it has to, really. Um, you can see in um, the one, the, you know, configuration file that we actually pass to config, like the first line that's not a comment or an empty line uh, is actually an include. And we just include this, you know, a different uh, generic uh, configuration file. This is the one for multiprocessor and it just includes, you know, the generic single process or single core configuration um, and then adds a multiprocessor option and then says that you can have more than one CPU. Um, so, but anyway, we have to, there's three parts uh, to this config file and all of the files that it includes. Um, the first part is basically this top things and machine specifier part. The top thing, um, you know, top things can be either empty or it can be a top thing, which is either you can say like, hey, I want to, you know, have this direct, you know, this path name directory be my source directory. Um, and I want, you know, this path name directory to be my build directory, if you haven't already set them. Um, and you can include other files and you can have empty lines. Um, not much, really. Um, the only really real important part of, and you know, in the default configuration, none of this stuff matters either. So the only the real interesting stuff is this machine specifier um, which says like hey this is the architecture that I want this kernel to be compiled for um, and so what that does is it calls the set machine function which uh, essentially finds all of the source code files that uh, describe or all the configuration files that describe the capabilities that OpenBSD has on the architecture that you want to compile for. So in almost every case that's going to be AMD 64, 64-bit um, x86 architecture. Um, this set machine um, function If I can type, um, it's right here. Basically, all it does is, uh, in fact, really, that is all that it does is include um, include some files on your behalf. It includes the configuration files for AMD sixty four on your behalf, and that gets gets you started in the second part of the program, which is. Uh, or the second part of the configuration, which is describing all of the capabilities that OpenBSD has for this architecture. Um, you know, it's going to read, um, you know, all of the stuff from comp files. Um, if you have like a um, machine arch, which AMD 64 doesn't, you would read from this arch AMD 64 or whatever this machine arch variable is this comp file, but it doesn't exist. So um, you just read from an empty file, basically. Uh, and then, you know, so once you're done with comp files, you read um, this configuration file, which is AMD64 specific. 
Um, so that gives you all of the capabilities that OpenBSD has for your machine. And then the third part, um, um, is like this just specifier, um, right? So that is just where we say like, hey, this is what I want actually compiled into the kernel that I'm compiling right now. That's where you say, hey, I want support for, uh, I don't know, an NTFS file system, or, you know, I want to expose PCI configuration space to user space. Um, various things that you may or may not want to do, um, or support that you want to have compiled into your kernel, that's where you describe it. Um, and that's, that's really it, you know, like, it's, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there, but, you know, um, if you can have, like, little simple uh, pieces to, you know, broad outlines are important before you start diving into details. Um, or it certainly helps, I think. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm going to sort of switch gears now to talk, um, now that we've got a general idea of how the configuration files are laid out. Um, let's switch gears into how YYParse um, works. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, you know, what this gram y, gram.y and scan.l concepts little part is about. Um, gram.y, which is this file, um, is a file that is uh, that you pass to Yak, which is a program, um, and it turns this file into a C file um, that you compile um, to get this function yyparse. Um, however, yyparse uh, needs sort of a helper function called yylex. Um, because yyparse doesn't read the configuration file directly. yylex does, and it passes tokens and values for those tokens, uh, sometimes, not always a value, but sometimes, to yyparse, and then yyparse uses that information to do things. Um, scan, so the way that you get yylex is using, is scan.l. So, Um, yeah, this is scan.l. Um, it's not terribly long. I mean, it's like, what, 280 lines? 274 lines? Not terribly long. Um, and, uh, yeah, you use a program called flex to turn scan.l into a C file, which you compile with yak, uh, to make a working program or part of one that can, you know, parse a configuration file. Um, or, you know, if you wanted to, you could use these programs to create a programming language. Um, they're very general purpose, um, you know. Um, but I just wanted to give that sort of overview as well as show you sort of a simple version of Lex and Yak in action. So, um, if we um, so you can see like this simple version of Lex um, is like super short, right? Like, what is this? 15 lines? And then this is uh, 60 lines, roughly. Um, you know, very, very short. Um, and so I will show you um, sort of what these are designed to do. So I've got this program called, well, so I made a little make file um, to compile all of this so that I didn't have to type out all of this stuff every time I change something. But, um, you, Yak, um, 
you know, you pass it, you know, a dot y file, and what it does with that dot y file is it creates this y dot tab dot c file. Um, <clears throat> if you pass it this dash d option, which you should do whenever you're using it with flex, it will also create this header file y dot tab dot h. Um, which is a very short header file. It, you know, says that path name is 257. Um, and it creates this type def, YYS type, um, which is this, you know, union of a character pointer and a string link structure pointer. Um, and... Um, so that's pretty simple. I just wanted to show you that because I'll reference it later. Um, you don't really ever look at y.tab.c, but just wanted to show like this is the file that gets made by yak. Um, it also makes this header file um, so that it can communicate with lex.yy.c, which is what is made by flex when you pass it simple.l. And then, like, you compile it cc-o into simple. So I made the executable itself simple. Just called it simple. And then uh, these are the you know input files. And then we link it. These are just special linking um, arguments to the compiler. Um, so you know, this is how you how you use this. So um, yeah. Um, sorry, my dogs are barking at people. Walking by. Give me just a second. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's how that how that all works. Um, you know, uh, overview style. So, if you want to see what this program actually does, um, what it's designed to do is if I just write simple. Um, if I take any string of lowercase letters um, and separate them with vertical bars, space is optional, um, and hit enter, it'll print them out one per line. And then you give it an end of file by hitting control D on a Unix system, and uh, it quits. So that's what it's supposed to do. Um, and uh, currently, though, I wrote this program to demonstrate like a bug, actually, that I think is in the config program. Um, because right now, um, if you give it this, it misses one. It misses the middle, all the middle ones right now. Um, and that's how the config program is set up. So any more than like two arguments, it's not going to work. Um, if you just say like one argument, it's fine. Um, if you do two, still works. Um, but as soon as you get into like more than two, it doesn't really work. Um, so, yeah. Um, but anyway, I'll show you why that happens. Give me just a second. God dang dogs. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, so this is like, you know, overview. Um, this is um, this is just saying like any string of lowercase letters, you return those with a path name token, um, which is 257, although it doesn't matter, it just matters that it's greater than 255. Um, you ignore white space, you return new lines as a new line, um, and then single character, you just return whatever it is. So when it sees that vertical bar, it's going to return as the token value, the ASCII value of the vertical bar. Um, and then when we get into YY, 
Um, you get over here into YY parse. Everything between this line and this line is just C code for your actions, which are the things between braces. Um, Flex like has a similar output. They're pretty similar um, in their outputs um, or in their formats. Um, they both have these sort of like these things that separate different sections um, of the the file. Um, but yeah, uh, the YY parse is uh, a little more complicated. Um, you know, everything in here is just straight C C code. This union is actually where we created in that header file. You can see how this looks very similar. This is all the things that can be returned either from yylex, all the values, right? So if I want to like pass a value to yyparse, uh, I set this, you know, string very uh, string field of yylval. Um, if I want, right, this path names is going to return a string link pointer. So, you know, I have to declare this in the union. And then I have to say down here that path names is this SL type and that path name is the string type. And then this is just to say that this token is left left associative, although it doesn't really matter um, in, in our case. Um, so, yeah, the main stuff, the main part of the grammar is what's between here. Um, because everything after here is just C code. Um, and this is what's you know really going on. So what you can see here is that the whole grammar is just some path names followed by a new line. Um, what I want path names to be is either a single path name or many path names or path names followed by a vertical bar and followed by a path name. Um, so, you know, what this action does is it creates an SL, uh, a string linked, a string link structure um, with the string of the value that was passed from uh, YYLEX. Um, and then here, what I'm trying, what, you know, I, you know, nominally I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I've got some path names right here, and I want to set the next one to this one, right? So these are linked lists, and I, yeah, that's what I want to do. Um, the problem is that these actually need to be switched. So, um, If we do it like this, and then we say, okay, um, SL uh, create, so this should work. So what this is saying is, okay, uh, I want this whole thing, which is a path name, to be set equal to the creation of this path name, and I want its next pointer to point to this list, um, right? So this third thing. So these dollar sign one and dollar sign three are the like first and third things in this defining line, um, and so the way that this works is when Yak. Uh, you know, sees this first uh, path name, it's going to say, okay, can I still, it's going to look ahead to the next token that YYLEX gives it. If the next token is a new line, then it knows that the only way that it can parse this configuration correctly is if this is it. And so it's just going to create a string link structure um, which, by the way, a string link structure, in case you missed this, is just a character pointer and a pointer to the next string link structure. Um, so it's just a linked list of strings. Um, so if it sees this, you know, new line as the next character after a path name, then it knows that it's done, 
right? It like the only way that it can parse this grammar correctly without giving an error is if the path names is just a single path name and the next thing and that's what it's going to return as path names it's just a single string link structure and that's it however if it sees this then what it's going to do is push this token onto its internal stack and also push this token onto its internal stack and then enter a, a loop for path names so um, then it's going to go back in here and it's going to say okay um, do I have a single path name followed by you know a new line or am I followed by a uh, or if I'm followed by an or then I just push the path name and the vertical bar onto the stack and go from there and uh, it keeps doing that it keeps pushing all this stuff onto the stack until it gets to this one where it's followed by a new line and then what it does is okay it says sl create so it creates a string link at the very end and then it's going to look and see that you know on its stack it'll have a it'll reduce this and so it'll have path names followed you know this happens whenever it reduces uh, it's called reducing when it like knows that it's you know when it knows how it has to actually uh, parse something it reduces um, so it'll have path names or path name on the stack and so then it'll create this first one and it'll put its next pointer to be this last one um, the one that was just created and then it'll reduce that and it'll have path names on the top of the stack it'll re you know take all these three and reduce them into just having a path names on the stack and it keeps doing this recursively um, <laughs> and that's how you get the actual correct uh, link of uh, things in your program or correct parsing um, and how you get the proper linked list um, so yeah you can see like the and then like once we've got path names in a new line we just print the linked list right so we just print the value of that string link structure the string value and then a new line um, so what happens when these two are switched basically um, when path names and path name are switched is that um, it well okay first things first let's uh, show that this actually works um, so that still works oh I'm supposed to do uh, I'm supposed to end the file single thing still works um, let me show that I can just do the two thing and then the real test is do three things work yes so um, when you have them switched when it sees path names first and then path name like we had before um, so Um, um, so this first one dot next is going to be SL create of three. Um, and then we want to return this first one. Um, this is saying okay return this path names thing so we're gonna like <clears throat> anytime we see a path name we can reduce it immediately to a path names regardless of whether we see an or next or not um, and so 
the first time we're just going to have a single thing and then the next one that gets added gets added to the first thing's next value it reduces that into one path names but then it takes it keeps taking the first thing's next value um, instead of the instead of pushing everything onto the stack and building the linked list from like the front backwards it tries to build it from the front forwards uh, which it's just not set up to do uh, you kind of need to understand like Lex and Yak a little bit to like fully comprehend how all of that uh, you know uh, I recommend you know reading a little bit of this book to make sure that you understand it if you're really worried about it but just know that like getting this recursion right can be kind of hard uh, sometimes or certainly like it's the hardest part about using yak I would say um, but you know if you don't get it right then you know you're gonna have problems so the reason why I brought this up is because there's a part you know I wrote this um, to show sort of like <laughs> uh, or to make sure that I was reading uh, part of config correctly and there's a part where they do something like this and they need to switch these I think maybe they're leaving it like that because they don't want anybody to ever have more than two path names but I figured I would just make sure. And then, like, you know, this SL create function, in case you were curious, uh, it just allocates um, this, allocates space for a string, and then, um, yeah. Um, stores the, the string um, there this string pointer that gets yeah that gets uh, set there it uh yeah um yeah if you don't allocate space for the string then you'll get some some weird bugs um so yeah um anyway um but that's basically what it is you just like you can have recursive rules and you know it just allows you to create lists of things um but yeah you should mostly just read these as like definitions and then these are what you do with them um so yeah um let's see um Yeah, and so if you look at um, if you look at scan.l, um, you can see that most of what it's returning is just like the lexer is still pretty simple. Most of what it's doing is just returning these uh, things as these tokens. Um, maybe I'll get into that a little bit later. I've kind of went on a little bit longer, but I think that will be um, informative uh, the next time. Um, or you know for future videos that you have a little experience with a simpler version of Lex and Yak so that some of this makes maybe a little bit more sense but anyway um, I'm gonna cut it there because it's probably been super long already and I've already had to yell at the dogs a couple times to stop barking at stuff uh, so anyway uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, you learned a little bit of some things. Um, yeah, have a good one. Peace.